record. Okay, we are recording. Okay, welcome to Fridays with Frisco. Um, Fisco, excuse me. Uh, we be going through um, the W-2 of printing and also of the submission files this morning. Um, if you have any questions, please, um, you can put in the chat or you can unmute yourself and ask the question also. Okay. Uh, the first thing I just want to let you know that we're going to be kind of going off our checklist again um, today, and you can find that under our um, SST meetings and trainings. And that will be down here under year end meetings. And over here to the right under the USB calendar year and for payroll. You can click on the uh, checklist here. And also I just wanna make sure you're aware of all our supporting documentation that we have here for W-2 processing. Um, and we have all the links that are here um, are ready for you so you can use these. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention was the central um, CCA um, on here we have, um, you just want to make sure that the CCA um, tax year is correct on what year you're going to be submitting. Um, and as of right now, um, once we get to it, this W-3 reconciliation form is um, under, not located yet on the tax year. And also the tax rates are not correct yet for um, CCA. I noticed uh, that in our documentation, let's see if I can find it. Where are you at here? Up here on CCA, um, these forms here, um, just wanted to let you know that this is still um, as of 2022. So you might wanna let your districts know that they need to check this again um, prior to starting in December. Um, they probably will update these uh, for the appendix probably um, maybe beginning of December. So I just wanted to make sure um, that you're aware that um, in our documentation, that still is for 2022. So if they do have a uh, revised, um, that they might wanna double check that again in the beginning of December. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started then. My computer's running a tad bit slow this morning. Okay. So we'll go down to our number 39 is where we're going to be starting, W-2 report and submissions. So again, the first thing um, which we went over on Friday is you just wanna make sure again that you and your, um, I, the, you guys have talked with your districts and what who is going to submit their own and, and print their own W-2s and making sure their W-2 configuration is set up correctly here. So again, if the district is submitting their own W-2 submission file, um, then they wanna make sure that they have this checked. Um, and also if they want to only include that last four of the social security number, then they wanna make sure this is also included also. And this would be for you at the ITC also. So if you're doing the file for them, um, so, then that will be on the forms for the W-2 forms and the XML. So I'm gonna leave it checked as if the districts is submitting their own W-2 files when we're looking at the W-2 um, options under reports, because it will look a little different. Um, so just wanted to let you know that I'm using the districts as they're submitting their own. Okay. And then we will go ahead and start with um, running the W-2 report first to get all the errors and that would be under W-2 reports and W-2 reports on submissions. So you want to go ahead and click report and again you can run the report in different formats. You want to make sure that they have the federal ID and state ID entered in correctly which they should and then again what kind of employer. Um, usually if of if it's a, not a new district, um, completely new district, um, this should be already filled out um, from last year, but just to double check that. Again, the sort options is up to the district of how they wanna run that report. 
Um, again, maybe they do it by um, building department, but usually it's by the name. So we'll leave it as name. And again, they want to make sure they have the correct year entered in when they're running that, which is 2023. So you want to go ahead um, and run the report for um, errors only. So this will make the report a little shorter um, and you can only look for those employees that have errors at this time and run those and get those corrected. Now, here's an example of my report, which um, mine is from a test file, so I have a lot of errors. But again, you will get just the ones that are showing all the errors on that report. And again, we um, use our documentation for those errors that are listed. Again, under report, under W2 reports, we have down here, we have all the errors and warnings um, that we have listed that can help you um, decipher what these errors mean and what their corrections and how to fix them. Okay. Again, you can um, correct those and then rerun that report as many time until you have um, zero um, errors. Um, maybe you'll have errors for OSDI um, that are informational. Um, again, that they can leave or they can correct those and move on. So once you have all the errors corrected, then you can go ahead and run the report to start balancing then. So we'll unclick that. And then we, if you want to include those fringe benefits, because they will print under each employee for the ones that you include on your W-2 report. So you can do that here if you like. You don't have to. But when we run the forms, you want to make sure that's um, selected. Um, if you're going to... Um, run the W-2 report and maybe balance it by pay group, this is an option also. So you can have that option here. But if you're gonna print it just for all employees, then you just wanna go ahead and generate the report. So once you do, um, generate that report, you have your um, W-2 report summary down here and the tax withheld. So just a reminder on balancing, you can use your earnings register and you wanna use, run it for the whole year for all employees and run and use the employee amount because this would be your total for the whole year. So you can use that option for balancing. Another one is using your quarter report for balancing, which using the year to date total down in the deductions item summary, you can use those for balancing with your W-2 report. And then on the W-2 balancing, um, again, use the tax withheld. So again, you have those options for balancing, um, making sure that all your employee amounts um, that the tax withheld is in balance. Okay. So again, once you find that all you're in balance with your quarter report and your W-2 is balance, so now we can go ahead and start um, the next step in our processing. Again, under our IT or under the ITC that I showed you, um, we do have those helpful links um, for special processing situations. So to remind you, um, um, these would be very helpful, especially the effects of the special W-2 situations. Um, this here um, lists anything um, that was added and that could cause some um, on, on balancing situations. So the ones in red that we have down here are the ones that are going to affect your W-2 report total gross is going to be higher than your quarter report totals. So just a reminder, if you see those um, Differencing. Um, look here to see. Okay, yes, the red ones are, and I do. That employee does have that, and that's why that um, that payroll item is off. So again, utilize this for your balancing. Okay. Okay. And then the next thing um, we'll be moving on to is. The steps below here are the, anything below 41 here is you wanna make sure, uh, again, um, BSO is 
the, your existing user ID and password is no longer um, going to be able to access that employer service. So the, again, they want to make sure they get that new username and password. If you at the C is doing this or the districts, um, again, they must now use the Social Security online account, the login.gov or the ID.me credential to gain ac access to this application now. So again, they want to make sure that they have this all completed before the end of December. So the next thing we're going to do is start creating the print file for the employee. So um, again, we're going to be kind of going back and forth. So if the district is creating their own forms and submitting, and then if you with ITC is going to do that for them. So the first one would be if um, we're going to create the mailable forms for the employees. So you want to go to reports, W-2 reports, and W-2 mail forms. And this is going to create that eight and a half by 14 Z fold that they use for the printing. And this, they're going to print directly out of um, USPR. So when they're in here, again, they this should be all filled in correctly already, but if not, um, again, they can make sure and double check. Again, their sort options, um, they wanna go ahead and select what sort option they want those to be printed. And again, this is up to the district on how they want those to be printed. I'm just gonna use a plain name. And then you wanna go ahead, again, make sure your address is filled in, your city and state and zip code. Um, the other option is to show the building department for the mailable forms because uh, if uh, your district is a pretty large district um, and they can send those out to different um, buildings or departments and break those down um, so they can do that also. And that will print right on to the right of the address on those forms. So again, you wanna make sure you include your fringe benefits. And again, if you can have um, as many as you want listed down here, but if employee has more than three, um, it's only gonna pick the top three. So you just wanna make sure um, they're aware of that. And then you can go ahead and generate that mailable form. So once you create that, you're gonna see the job started, generated W-2 forms. And you're going to see that right up here. And as you can see, it's stating started. And once that is com um, completed, it will switch over to completed. And there it go. It just flipped. So now the it's generated. So now what we need to do is go over to the W2 reports and form output files. And as you can see, here's the file I just created. So you can go ahead and download that file and it turns into a, a mail uh, output zip file and PDF. So they will use this file to um, print their um, mailable forms. Okay, and they'll save that. And then um, once they did that, they will use um, that W-2 form. And then when they send it to their printer, they wanna make sure they're using the actual size. Um, once they have done that, um, then they wanna make sure that they go ahead and archive that file. And what that will do will send that to the file archive and it will move it and it will remove it um, from this grid. So I'm going to go ahead and send that over. And now it's listed under your calendar year end reports. So again, just for a double check, we want to make sure that that went over there. And it's under my calendar year end. And there's my zip file. So they just want to make sure it did get transferred over so it don't get lost or it never, um, if it didn't get over there, um, then they need to look into that or maybe rerun it. Okay. 
So then the district, um, they're going to print that. And then if the um, printing is using edges accountability, um, if you at the IGC is printing those for the districts, then um, they you will want they will run it as a I'll get over here, back over here. Ah. Okay, you're gonna go under XML, under the W2 report options, and then you're gonna select the same options if how they want it to be ran. Make sure that sort is correct. And also they make sure they, um, the districts have, um, they include their fridge benefits and run that XML file. And then they have the XML and they're gonna wanna save this file and send it securely to you at the ITC. So again, this would be something that between you and your districts will have to decide how they send that to, um, to you in a secure site. Okay. So the next thing would be to create the print file for the employer copy. As of right now, we don't have an option to print those half sheets that we've had when we were in Classic, but we do have um, a feedback issue open for that. And um, it's USPSR FB, um, and that's that feedback, and it's 1518 if you want to keep track of that. Um, so just to let you know, I do believe that's something um, for 2024, but it's just not going to happen for 2023 at this time. So as of right now, they'll have to print them um, on those full um, sheet of paper. Um, the create, excuse me, the create print file then, um, what you want to do is if the district is printing their own, they will go to the W2 report form and create forms. And again, um, probably for the sort option, it's going to be by employee name because they're probably easier to sort through them um, if they divide those up or something um, or to look through them, um, the employee name would probably be the best. And again, they want to make sure they include this fringe benefit box and um, all the same ones that they did prior for the printing of the mail. And they will create that. So again, when they create that, it will be in the W-2 printing job. And then again, they're going to have to go over to the W-2 form file, output file, and grab that. And then once they grab that file, Okay, maybe the system's running a tad bit slow. Let's try it again. There it goes. And then once they bring that over, they will grab that W2 form file, download it, and then they will um, send that to their printer and print that um, for their employer copy. And again, um, they want to go ahead and archive that. So again, like we did before with the mailable, go ahead and click on the archive and that's going to be sending it over to the 2023 calendar year end. So again, they want to make sure they go over to utilities and file archive and make sure that that file was transferred over. Now, if you at the IHCC is doing the uh, printing for them, um, their employer copy, so the district will want to do the XML Again, just exactly like you were before with the mailable forms for the XML and click XML for the employer copy. And then they will send that to you. Okay, so the next thing is to create the print file for the city copies. Um, again, if the district is printing their own, then they would just go ahead and click forms. And the only thing different they wanna do here is making sure that they have their city, select by city tax entity code entered here. And again, they can find that on their payroll item configuration um, screen on that code. So again, they can have a list of them 
Um, as of right now, we don't have a drop down where they can select, but I think that would be a great idea. Um, so they would just have to make sure they have their list of what cities they need to print. Okay. So once they do that, again, they're gonna start that job and they'll say over here when it's completed, and then they would go over again to the W-2 reports in the output files to grab that. So they're gonna do the exact same thing as they did for the um, mailable, for the employer copy. They generate that file and they send that to their printer and then they archive it. Same steps. So now if they're, you at the ITC is running them, or um, printing them for them. So again, they would do the exact same thing, but they would just make sure that they're doing the XML. And then they create and enter the, oh, well, where's that? Maybe the XML, they don't have it. I thought the XML had it. Um, the printing, um, and then they would use the XML and they would send that again securely to you at the ITC. Yeah, my computer's running a tad bit slow and this, there should be a box here, but I've been having problems with my system and I don't know why. So sorry about that. Yeah, it's just for some reason. Not giving it's giving me a headache this morning on this. So again, when once you create that, then the um they can print that on the account edge um L, oh, excuse me edges accountability. Okay, so the next thing is to create and submit federal submission file. So now once we have all the printing done, then you're going to go ahead and start creating the submission files. So the first one we'll do is the federal record. And again, if your districts or you at the ITC, so you're gonna, the tape files, uh, the files are gonna look a little different when, they're, when you're creating them, when they are at the districts are creating them. So the W-2 mass, it'll be the one for the districts. And then the W-2 tape will be for you to do the merge process at the end when you get all the files from all your districts. So again, so again on reports, on W-2 reports, you have your submission. And again, you can do your sort options. You wanna make sure all the information is filled in correctly. And then you're going to go ahead and generate your files. Again, if uh, the if you with AT is submitting them for them, you're not they're not going to have see this file summary report here. Um, these are for the districts to um, create use these. So you will generate the file. And then you have your file um, for their districts to submit for their federal. Again, if the you at the ITC is submitting it for them, they will send that file directly to you and that file would be w2tape.txt. And again, um, maybe you have steps in there that they have to rename that file with maybe their name in it. So you grab, so they have the, um, so you know what file it is for each district. I think that would can be very helpful. So again, then they would send that file um, in a um, once they um, copy that file to the archive, um, they can go ahead and make sure when they send that over that the file archive should have a list under the filtering the year under calendar year. And then it should show all the reports when they created that submission file. So you're just gonna to wanna to make sure that, and it should show um, W2 report PDF, W2 tape, 
and then there should be a W-2 mass if the districts are creating, submitting their own, and again, the W-2 form dat XML. So again, you wanna make sure you have that listed, all those show up here underneath before they move on. Okay. So again, if they're sending you the file for the W-2 tape, then again, they will send it to you securely um, per your instructions. So once I have that file, then they wanna make sure they run it through the AccuWage that they have there online under the um, SSA Business Service Online. Um, you wanna go ahead and sign in and click on the AccuWage Online tab, AccuWage Online option, and then submission type, click W2, and then you can click your start your testing. So you will find your W2, um, mass file that they and run the w2 through that the mass file look they will send back errors so they want to make sure they create any errors on that file that they send rerun the w2 mass again or w2 um, submission file send it through again until they get no errors on that file so once that file is completely um, error free then you want to go ahead and select upload file to SSA business service. Again, same place and choose new W2, W3 for tax year for the 2023. So then you would locate, the districts will locate their W2 mass and then click that submit option. So once they submitted that, they will get a printout of that submission information so they want to probably print that out and keep that um, in their folder. And then they can check back periodically to make sure the status of that submission file. And then they should hopefully within that day, um, print the confirmation of the submission being accepted. So, okay, so that is that. Now on the file archive under file archive utilities, um, here's a list of the ones when you create different things for the calendar year and reports, um, how, when, when, the file, when these file go over to W2 file archive, when that happens. So again, when they create the W2 submission create um, event, that is when these reports will be sent over to the W-2 report options. So just this will be very helpful um, if you're looking to see when they are created and what is created and what gets sent over to where. So again, if um, ITC and again, if the district, uh, the district is creating, submitting their own files, then these are the files that they will show when the W-2 submission. So we have your mass, the CCA, and um, the ones below. And then if, um, the, for your districts that have out of state, then yes, then, then they, these would be sent to, um, these would be created just for them. Okay. And then the next thing we'll go through will be the Ohio file. So when you're creating the Ohio file, same thing as your federal, you want to go ahead to get over here. Your state. So you want to click on your Ohio. And again, anything that's boxed in red, they want to make sure that's filled in with their information. Is this file being resubmitted? It should be no. Type of software, in-house program, and prepare. Again, um, it should be self-prepare. Again, um, you can work with your district on this, but it should be the L. Now, the submitter EIN and user um, ID, 
Again, that would be the information, the user ID and that you got for the BSO to be entered in that. And again, this would only appear if the district is submitting it. Now, if the district is not and you, um, the ITC is submitting it, then they won't have that option here. So when they're creating the file, they won't enter that in because that's not showing it. They're just creating the file. They're going to send it to you. But since they're creating the file, then they would need to um, make sure that information is and generate the submission file. And they also can generate the W-2 submission. So this is just what the summary kind of report looks like. And it just has a breakdown of employees process and some information on there. Okay, excuse me. Okay, so when they're creating that, again, if um, you at the ITC is um, gonna get that file, it would be the w2ohio.txt. So again, um, they will securely send that file to you. And again, um, if the districts is sending it to their own, sending it their own file, then in, they will get the W2 mass un, underscore Ohio dot text file. Again, they will send that file to their desktop and then they will go ahead and um, send that to the AccuWage to make sure that the file is error free before they actually submit it to um, Ohio. So again, like the federal, they're gonna go through the AccuAge, make sure the file rerun it as many times as they have to to get any the errors to be gone. And then they wanna go ahead and upload it to Ohio Business Gateway for the final. And again, you always wanna make sure that all the files are going to their file archive. Again, you can do this after each one um, to make sure that they're out there before you move on. Okay, so that's for Ohio. So now we're gonna move on to your um, districts that are on the outskirts of Ohio that have um, employees from other states. So again, you will go to W-2 state options, and then you will select each one, um, the districts, well, excuse me, they will select each one um, for their who they need to create the files for. So again, they only have to, if they only have Indiana employees, then they only have to go in to the Indiana and probably the Ohio, those are the two they'll probably have to create and make sure that they have those files created. So again, they want to make sure they have their information all filled out correctly. And then, let's see, I feel like my, I'm missing things in my, let's see. There we go. Now it looks better. So they want to make sure they fill that information in. Since the district is creating the Indiana file themselves, they want to make sure they have the taxpayer ID filled in and the three digits filled in. So once we're down here, and, and again, as I stated last Friday, they want to make sure that their payroll item configuration city tax record is correct because Indiana is a little different. So they want to make sure they have a county tax record set up, but they will use a city tax and make sure that payee address is Indiana because that's how when they're creating that file, that's what the software is looking for, any of uh, employees that has an Indiana address to be included in that file. And then the other thing, once they create that payroll item for that employee, they wanna make sure that they have an R for residents and the deduction type. And then the other thing would be in the payroll item for that Indiana, um, code, you want to make sure in that code one field, you want to make sure that it's either 01 or 92. And again, we have um, on page 36 of these filing requirements, what well, has a list of what counties um, for that employee. And this is what they will need to use and make sure in the payroll item for that um, city tax um, in the code one, these are listed in there. 
Okay. Again, this is probably already has been done, um, but just we put that in there, just a reminder to make sure um, that those codes are all set up correctly before starting their filing um, so they don't get any fatals or errors. Okay. So the next thing is, um, again, when they're running that, again, the taxpayer ID, this is only for Indiana when they create that. Now, when they, if they do Kentucky, they can move on down and start doing the Kentucky. Since this won't, they won't have a box here. They just didn't remove it when they're under Kentucky. So again, um, you don't need to fill that in. So they would continue on down prior or for each state that they need to print. And again, my computer is not filling in correctly. Sorry about that. Okay, let's try it again. There we go. Now we have our boxes back. So then we go ahead and um, make sure your information is filled out and generate the submission file. And again, <clears throat> the W-2 submission file summary. And again, um, once they create that file, again, they're going to have... Um, it's going to be either the W-2 with the abbreviation of the state, and this is the files that they're going to send you securely, or the W-2 mass underscore with the abbreviation of the state, and then they'll send that to your um, to their desktop for submission. Okay. Um, one other thing, um, we have Pennsylvania. Okay, well, let, let's refresh my screen one more time. There we go, Pennsylvania. There we go, now I have my stuff at the bottom. So we have to make sure that all the information is filled in, again, for Pennsylvania, and the submitter EI and user ID. Now, um, one thing different for Pennsylvania, they have a transmittal file. Again, if this is your first time for your districts, I just came in to redesign. I, everybody should be in, I'm assuming by now, uh, or they are in, but um, they just want to make sure that they create that transmittal file and it should have um, all the quarters on there. So if they click on there, I don't have any Pennsylvania, but again, if they do, they want to create that file and they have, um, make sure all that information is filled in. Because this is a file that, that has to be sent to Pennsylvania. And then the last one is your West Virginia. Let me refresh it. There we go. There we go. And then you wanna go ahead and make sure you enter in your information as before, and it's correct. And then you wanna make sure, West Virginia is a little different. They need to enter in every first quarter tax due, and they just round that to the nearest whole dollar. And then the total. So they wanna make sure that balances with what they have when they ran it for the whole year. And then they can create that submission file. So again, we have a list of what files will be going out to the calendar year end. And again, I have that listed here under file archive. So again, if it's for, if, if you at the IETC is submitting them for them, what files will show? And if the district is submitting their own, what files will show for the state? Okay. Where are we at here? We're here. So again, we have the W2PA, which is for ITC. And then the CSB is for the districts submitting. And then again, anything with a mass is for the districts to submit. And anything with just the abbreviation W2 and the abbreviation of the district, or the, excuse me, the state, that it would be sent to you securely um, at, to the ITC. So once they get all these files created and they verify that they are under file archive, under calendar year end, 
then they can start uploading each file separately to the appropriate state websites. Okay. So now we'll move on to the next one is the creating of the city submission files. So again, kind of the same. Um, you're gonna go under the city option here and then making sure all your information is correct. And then each city, again, you need a list of your city codes, which you can be found under the payroll item configuration and you need to enter those codes in. Um, the include amounts for all cities, again, usually, um, cities like this checked to include all the amounts, but again, they can verify what their cities to see how they want that answered. But most of them, they like that checked. The next one is to include the city name for the processing city. Again, this is probably going to be checked. They're going to want to see the city name for what city they're processing. So usually both of these boxes will be checked. Again, they can verify with their city on how they want those answered. Okay, so the next option, which I don't know if um, this has been, I think a couple years that we've had added this, this optional custom city submission override. A lot of cities may want different things in their files. So every city is different. So we came up with this option, which is located under utilities, W2 city override. So this is something they're going to want to do and make sure they have set up prior, probably before they start running W-2s for city. So what this is, every city may have different options that they want in fields or removed. So what we came up with is these options here, what are most commonly used for ITCs that they um, want either added or removed from their file. So now they can do this. So in our documentation, let's see, I have it here somewhere. I have so many different tabs open here. Okay, so we're just gonna go here. So let's go to the utilities. And we have that in our documentation. And we have a break and we have it um, pretty much spelled out pretty good of what each option does and what you're going to see on the file that either it adds or removes and where it's coming from. So once you add the name, so probably the city name that you want to create a different file that needs maybe something um, added or removed. The description you can add doesn't have to be. Now, um, also the other thing that I wanted to mention was this is include RO record. And what that is, is if they are, um, let's see, where is that at? Right here. These are for cities that want this information on their record. So it's going to include that, which an RO record is, it will show if employee has federal medical savings, adoption assistance, or designated Roth 457B. So again, um, they will have to work with their cities to see what do they want included on that record. If they do want this information included, then they're going to want to make sure they check that box, include RO record. And that will print directly then um, when they create that file. So if they're including that RO record, then again, they're going to see um, an RO for each employee that has these ops, these payroll items, and also a total RU record um, that totals the RO records. So again, um, those are up again up to the district and the city of what that city may want included in that. If they don't want any of those on the file, you can just leave that unchecked. So the next thing then is um, the RS to override the RS record. And this is what these options do. So um, here is a list of all of them that they have out there. Um, 
and it tells exactly what it's doing and where it's coming from. So again, um, try not to go through each one, but probably be hard not to. So again, here is the options, um, the option codes for optional text type code. You have your state control number and then the supplemental data. And in our documentation, we do have where, um, so we can see it a little bigger. So each one. So if you're going to um, need to, let me go down. Here it is. So here is the options. If you do examples of the field names, um, the optional code for state abbreviation, that's going to um, look on your, take the two character state code, and this is coming from the payee that is assigned to each of the city item configuration. That's where this part is coming from. Now for the type code 308 on their file, city deduction type, this is come, coming from the city payroll item record, and that's looking at the C, uh, employment, residence, or space. So again, maybe they don't want that on there. Um, so they can go ahead and um, remove that by looking at that city. And if that city has a blank space on that, because they don't want that residence filled in, then it will fill in with a blank. The next one is the state control number, um, the state abbreviation. Again, this is the two character of the state code, and this is coming from the state on the payee assigned to that city item configuration. And then the next one is the city name. And again, that comes from the payee that is assigned to that city item configuration. And then you have your state full name, and this is using uh, the payee again from the city item configuration. Uh, we had a question from Andrew, and it says, is there a way for us to communicate with other ITCs about cities need these override fields, like share reports for this option? Um, I don't have anything at this, you probably will have to maybe get a hold of other ITCs and see if they are aware of these cities that need these options. Um, we don't have anything on our end. Um, so maybe here in the chat, um, maybe some of the ITCs can um, help with that information if they do or if they are aware of some cities or maybe um, they can email and help Andrew on that. <clears throat> okay, so once you get that all figured out what you need, um, then what you do is create, and again, you have that option. Is this going to be applied um, override value to the city for the selected tax entity code only? So only this city? or apply override value only to cities that are not a selected tax entity code, or you're gonna override them for value to all the cities. So again, you have that option to override, um, to include uh, amounts for all cities. Let's see. I do have one here um, that I already curated. Uh, I created it for my cafe study and I used it to include or to put a blank in the selected tax entity code. And I do have one here ready selected and let's see, 337. And there's 337. So I have um, no um, abbreviation there for in, in that field for the state control. So again, um, 
If you have questions, our documentation pretty much explains it pretty much um, step by step and what field and where to find that on that um, file and exactly what it does. I don't know how many IT or districts use this option, um, but it is out there for them if their city um, is pretty picky on what they want on that file or not. Okay, so once they have that figured out, um, again, then go back to W2 report, W2 city, and then making sure um, include amounts for all cities. And then again, making sure they include the city name. So once they go ahead and got that all figured out and they are running, maybe um, creating a file, maybe all their cities um, are wanting this um, this um, custom city submission that they created, then they want to make sure to include the amounts for all cities and create that file. Okay. So once they create each file for each tax entity code, again, um, they do the exact same thing, um, selecting, um, printing the sum summary report and generating the city W2 submission file. So again, the file for ITC and district is going to be the same. It, it's not any different like the other ones are. So they wanna take that file, um, and send either some, um, send it to you at the ITC or they will go ahead and print that or send that in, excuse me. And again, they wanna verify after they run the file to make sure it went out to calendar year and bundle. And again, they will see that city file. Okay. Okay. And then um, again, once they got the file, um, they want to upload it then um, to the city, um, each city website. Okay, the next thing is the create and submit the CCA submission file. Um, now this is again, is either you at the HC is going to do this or if the district is doing that themselves. So again, they will go back to W2 report options, submissions, and then down here below is the CCA and the radio information. Okay. Now, when they're creating that file, again, they wanna make sure all this information is entered in correctly, the correct year, and then go ahead and create the records. Now, if the district is submitting, they're going to get a W-2 mass CCA, and then they would save that to their desktop. Also, if the ITC is going to get the file, then it will be a W-2 CCA, and that will be sent to you directly in a secure way again. And again, once they run those submission files, this should automatically be sent out to file archive under the calendar year end. So they wanna double check that, that either that file, the mass or the CCA is located. Again, under our file archive. Okay. <clears throat> then what they wanna do, either um, the districts will want to go to their CCA and making sure that they upload that file then um, to them. And again, um, CCA has a W3 annual recognition form that needs to be sent out. And that was kind of what I was mentioning earlier, which I should have waited till now because that was quite confusing. Um, again, under the tax year, they do have it here. But as of right now, if you go to tax year, they don't have it listed yet. So again, that should be probably coming out within um, the month or two. Um, again, it's not due to February 28th of 2024. So they probably will have that maybe after the first of the year. So again, they just have to kind of keep track um, going back to the tax year to make sure when they add that. Um, the next would be to create and submit your RITA file. So for again, for those districts that have a RITA um, cities, they will need to create that file just like CCA. 
so they can um, generate the RITA and generate the RITA W-2 submission file. Again, if uh, ITC is doing all the submitting for them, then again, they won't see these summary reports under there. So again, they will get a W-2 RITA, which would be sent securely to you, or a W-2 uh, master RITA file, which is what is used by the district to send directly to RITA. Again, once they create that submission file, they're going to want to go out, make sure under the calendar year and reports, and make sure that file is there, either um, under for the district, which would be the mass, or if it's through ITC. Okay. And then once they get that file, then they would go ahead to Rita and upload that master Rita file um, if districts is submitting it. So now once we have all the files curated and either they're submitting themselves or you at the ITC is gonna submit them. So you have all the files uh, sent to you already. Um, we will be going to the next step of the ITC management. So districts, um, I'm not sure, our ITCs um, probably have used this last year. Um, this is our way of how you can merge your files together. Like you did in classic, um, so this is a one step and probably have been using it if uh, if you've been doing OSDI or ODGFS, excuse me, merge files, um, if you haven't. Um, so what you would need to do, and again, we have documentation and to let you know under our, where is that at, here, and our USB calendar down here at the bottom, we do have a link that takes you to directly to our documentation if you're kind of new to this ITC management or need a refresher. So I have our um, a test here. And first thing that you're gonna wanna make sure is that under districts, you have all your districts that you're gonna be submitting files for. You can do this um, one by one, or we have this mass load that you can upload a file and bring in all the districts um, in at one time. And again, we have documentation under districts and the template spreadsheet that you can use to um, enter in all that information for the districts. So you don't have to, um, if you have 50 that you have to upload, um, you can make it a little easier by using this spreadsheet. And they want to make sure they save it in CSV format before they import it. So once they got that um, sheet CSV all created, then they will go ahead and upload it and then import records. And then when they go back to districts, they should see the list of 50 districts that they brought in. Again, they can do a quick verify, make sure their address is correct if they need to. Um, probably be a good idea to make sure they just double check that to make sure um, they can edit if they do find an error and correct that. Or if they added a city by accident, they can delete it. Okay. The other thing you will need to do if you're going to uh, be submitting their your district city files, they're going to need to make sure they bring in um, create a, a city um, records for each city that they're, they will be doing, that you'll be doing for the city. So you're gonna need their tax entity code and also the name of the city. So they're gonna need that information either from the city or from the um, districts themselves, or um, you probably can just get that by going into the payroll item configuration. Okay, so once you have all the cities entered, so now your next step is using the merge process. I have a couple here already. Um, so what? once you get those files that they securely send to you, um, you're going to want to go ahead and bring each of those files in. 
So you can do that as they um, get sent to you by email and you can check those off or you have a checklist, maybe a spreadsheet. So you know what files are coming in for what districts and what files you were receiving. So you maybe know, okay, I'm going to get these city files from um, these districts. I'm going to get federal files. I'm going to get CCA and RITA files from these districts. So again, maybe a spreadsheet would be a good idea um, so that you guys can keep track of what's coming in directly for each district. And then once the, you have everything in, you can do a double check and you can filter by that uh, school name. You can just, uh, filter by um, what kind of record it is. So you can just find federal. Or if you have Michigan files, again, you have that. So you can go ahead and double check you have everything in. And then again, um, once you have, um, once you start uploading those one by one, you can go ahead and start bringing those in. What records there is, what county, what kind of city, if you're doing bringing in city records, and then upload the file and save. So I have a couple, like I brought in one of my city. And then I have three federal, but these are from last year. But um, and then you want to make sure if you still have your 22, you probably want to filter just for 23 um, records. So you have all your 23, 2023 records sitting out there. So once you have all your city records um, brought in, then you want to go ahead or excuse me, all your records for your all your um, submissions that you're going to be doing for your districts then you want to go ahead and start your merge process. So again, the merge, you want to make sure you have the correct year. So it's looking at what those that year that we have in those uh, districts that we entered. And then you're going to find everybody that has a federal record that was under this W2 district for 2023 federal. And then you want to go ahead and enter your information in again. The submitter user ID, you will use what you got, that new user ID that you probably just got um, recently from BSO, use that. And then you wanna go ahead and just make sure um, your contact information should be already filled in and done. But again, you can double check that just to make sure that that information is filled in correctly. Now, if this is the first time um, submitting, um, creating a submission, then you don't need to create, do the resubmission. That's only if you um, have to fix it um, after you resubmitted it and need to um, do it as a resubmission. And then you start your W2 merge. And hopefully with no errors then, I, let me get out of there. I did that earlier, okay. So once you get that start merging and hopefully everything um, looks good, you go over to W2 merge results and you will find your file has merged. Again, it'll be 2023. Um, and then you can go ahead and click on that file for federal and you can see um, which all the district's names how many records were in each. Again, if you have a spreadsheet that shows this and you can double check your totals then, what you should have for your wages and federal taxes for that federal record. And then you have your extract results you can print, which is a CSV spreadsheet. And again, you can use this as a balancing tool. And it shows um, all the federal information. Okay. Then once you uh, verify that those records are correct, then you want to go ahead and download that W2 mass file. It should convert over now. And now you're going to see all the header information. You got your RA record in there. Um, so all that has converted over into that one file that you need to upload to um, SSA, the BSO. And again, you want to do that merge file then for every 
if you have these um, states for your districts, the RITA, CCA, and then each city. So if you're doing this city, you're gonna have to pick the city submission type and then also the W2 city. So again, you're gonna have a list of all those cities that we did and that first step under W2 city. And then you go ahead and, and click that. So those are coming from your, um, the W2 district entry that you um, uploaded for each of your districts. So that one is about the only one that's different that you have to select um, the city um, file separately because of course you probably you will have to do them each separately to create that file. Okay. Any questions on the ITC merging? Again, we have our documentation out there for that. Um, again, if you have any questions on that. Okay. All right. Okay, so then we're going to go back to our checklist. And again, um, you can do the ITC merging at the end of, uh, you know, after everything, um, after all your districts are closed, if you want, or um, again, that's up to you at the ITC when you want to start doing those um, merging of those files. Um, the next one would be the W-2, or excuse me, the year-to-day report. Again, this is optional if you want to run that and print that. Again, you will find that under reports, under year to day report, and you can go ahead and um, run this report if you like. Again, under the file archive, um, that report, let's see, I did have that somewhere. Where was that? Maybe we don't. I thought that was one that was ran, but I don't think it is. Yes. Calendar year end reports. So once they close December, that report will get sent out to file archive, just to let you know. So again, you can run that year to day report. They can run that year to day report if they want, if they print it off, but it is out there. It will be sent to file archive. So they don't need to actually print that off if they don't want to. But again, they can um, run it. They can look at it before they close the December to make sure everything looks fine. So just to let you know. Okay. So the next thing is, so the W2 PDFs, it will go to your kiosk. So when you're wanting to create that, so what you're going to do is go to W2 reports, W2 reports, and W2 archive individual. And what this does is create the file that the kiosk is going to use so employees can look at their W-2s in PDF form. So again, they want to make sure they're filling out that information exactly how they did before, what they include the um, box, benefit box. So their W-2 matches with what they were sent. So they want to make sure that is um, exact. So again, we have the inner step to ensure the same control numbers as I make sure that this is the same as you, as you print file for the employee W-2. So you want to make sure that is in the same sort order also. Okay. Again, you just want to make sure all the information is filled in correctly and then you wanna schedule the job. Let's see, I'll do, I'll do 10, Let's see if it works. Boop. Oh, I already have something in file archive. So once you um, have that information, I'll, I'll remove it and we'll run it. That way we can show. And we'll schedule. Ah. Uh, yeah. So as you can see, if they have scheduled a job um, and for some reason had to rerun it again, you can see that this is why um, 
because you can only have one scheduled at one time. So, so each time, hopefully now I have gotten all my And we'll try it now. Here we go. So now we'll say employee W-2 archive job scheduled, successfully sent to um, calendar year 2023. And you can also watch it under job scheduler. And it completed already. So now when I go to my utilities file archive, W-2 archive, eh, not there yet. Running. There it is. And you will see the file for all the employees. Again, this is what our kiosk is going to be looking for for this PDF file. Okay. So once you have um, the kiosk part of it done and the insurer and double always double check to make sure it went over to the W-2 archive because it's not going to be under payroll archive. It's going to be under W-2 archive. Then you can move on. They can move on to closing of December posting period. Again, um, once they close this, they're going to see under calendar year reports, they're going to see all these reports are going to be sent to that calendar year end. Under here. So all those reports will show here. So they're just going to want to double check that all these reports have made it over to um, file archive under calendar year end. Okay. And then when you're closing the year and, and closing the December also, these get curated automatically, the month end, quarter end, and calendar year end reports. So those will all show under your calendar year end reports and be listed here. So again, they want to double check to make sure all those reports got um, transfer or, um, or were sent to the file archive before they move on. And then they want to, again, like I have here, <laughs> verify that the calendar reports are there. So they just want to make sure that those reports are there. Okay. I think I went over everything. There's a lot. Is there any questions on anything that we have gone over that you just need maybe a little bit more explanation on? I try to include everything that I possibly could. Um, again, um, use you, you, the links here um, for each department um, for when they need to submit the file, maybe for the ITCs. Um, again, um, we have those included here for you. Don't think I have anything else. Okay. Um, if there isn't any questions, um, I think this ends the processing of uh, forms for W-2 and submissions. And I hope everyone has a great Thanksgiving. So far, the weather's been nice, but it sounds like our winter is going to start next week, at least up here. So, yes, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving, Andrea. Thank you. You also. Thanks.